Hey, it's Matt here, and I recently got a great question from Chrissy Johnson, who has recently wrote me an email and said, "Hey, I've been, you know, I've promoted some affiliate offers recently, and I'm noticing a trend about return rates. Now, in particular, she's promoting higher dollar items, meaning $497 and above. She listed some statistics, and the average return rate of those—they're all digital courses." The average return rate was almost 15%, which is a little high. We want to keep those as a, as a course creator. I want to keep mine under 10%. I'm, I'm, I'll say, you know, I'm, I'll brag about no product, no problem, and say that our return rate is like 3%. You know, and admittedly, we haven't done everything that we can do. I just think it's a good course, and that's why you know returns have been low. But as an affiliate, you might think that. You know, one of the one of the beauties of affiliate marketing is that you kind of turn over all that stuff to the course creator, the product creator, and then let them handle returns and stuff. And that's true. But imagine if you could reduce return rate from 15% down to 5%. That's 10% more commissions. And imagine if you could do that with some very simple things. That's what I'm going to share to you, with you today. I'm going to share five very simple ways. These are not things that take hours and hours to do. Five very simple ways to reduce those returns. And you know, as a result, you're going to get a 5 to 10% increase in affiliate commissions. Now, to be clear, I probably wouldn't do any or certainly not all of these if, if we're talking about a, you know, a $10 product and the return rate is 8%. You know, you're not going to make that much extra money. But when we're talking high ticket items, $200, $100 and above, these are worth it. And the first thing you need to do is make sure you're selling the product properly. You got to make sure you're positioning the product. I want you to take a look at your marketing and say, am I positioning this the right way? Have a conversation. There's a kind of a step zero and that's you know, have a conversation with the affiliate manager or the product creator. Just say, hey, what are the return rates overall? And if overall they're 4% and you're at 15%, now you need to start looking at your marketing. If for the last, so you've done three pro, you know, product launches, three promotions, affiliate promotions, and you're at or below average on the last two, and then suddenly you're way above average, and you need to start looking at your marketing and did you position the product properly or did you promise something that maybe wasn't true? Not intentionally. I'm not saying you're unethical. You unintentionally said that this could do something that it can't. And you said that it's for somebody that it's not for. You said, hey, this is for anybody who wants to start a blog. But the reality is this course is actually for people who have already started a blog. You see, very fine line there. You want to be very careful about that. So look at that. Look at your marketing. Did you position it the correct way? The second very practical way to actually lower returns is to follow up with them. Typical return policy is 30 days. So we're going to run with that for this example. What communication are you having with them during that 30 days? You want to have an autoresponder set up where you communicate with them at least a few times during that sequence and say, hey, just wanted to check in and see how it's going with this you know, product, with this course, whatever it may be. The third thing you want to do is to help them share success tips. So part of that follow-up might be that on day three, you send them something and say, hey, I realize you're just getting started with this. Here's something I learned that helped me. So I'm going to make up an example here. Let's say you are promoting uh, this is, if you ever, if you follow me long enough, you know what I do is I look around my office to find something. So I'm looking over there, uh, office is right near our gym, and I see this new body ball. The, I don't know what it is. The part I'm looking at is written in Spanish. So it's a bola para el cuerpo. Um, I think cuerpo is body, I guess. Hey, cool, learned something new today. Four years of public school Spanish. I never knew that word, but now I do. I'm hoping that's what it means. Anywho. <laughs> So this body ball, right? So they bought this body ball. I'm going to guess this body ball is probably 40 bucks, maybe 30, maybe 50, somewhere in that neighborhood, 40 bucks, we'll call it. So this is probably not the best example, but let's say I'm a fitness instructor and I'm selling this body ball. I want to follow them and say, hey, here's something I learned about using this body ball. 
here's an exercise that's not in the little you know pamphlet they include. Here is an exercise. And if you stick with me over the next three weeks, I'm going to share 10 exercises you might not have thought of that you can use that you can do with this body ball. I want to stick around for those. I'm kind of previewing number five here. But you, I want to stick around and find out what those are, right? And you're, gonna, you're supporting me. I'm getting more use out of this body ball. So what am I going to do? I'm not going to return it because I'm using the thing every day, right? So the fourth thing is to set up a Facebook group for support. This is particularly true with digital courses. So let's say that you sell a digital course on creating a blog. We used that example earlier. We need a Facebook group to support each other. I need to hear from other people how it's going and, and, and in the ecosystem of I bought through you. And we want to support each other. This also allows you to support them. So you can do something like that. A 60-day launch your blog support group through a Facebook group. And then the fifth thing is you can offer to do a training, but it's after the return period. So what you do here is you announce this training, day 25, day 26, day 27, but you deliver it, say the return period ends on, you know, we'll just say August 31st. On September 5th, we're doing this free training. Only for people who bought through my link. So going back to that body ball example, again, weird example, what you might do in that, in that thing is you share five exercises you can do with this body ball, but hey, if you want to get all 15, I'm going to do a live demonstration on September 5th, and you announce that on, say, August 28th. Very simple way of, of keeping them in. Well, I want that, so I'm going to stick around. I'm not going to return that body ball, at least you know, inside the return period. So for a course, if you're promoting a, you know, an info product, so let's just say the course, you know, going back to that blogging example, hey, I'm doing a free training. We're going to show you, five, we're going to share five huge success stories, people who launched their blog this month. We're going to share those on September 5th. So make sure you stick around. So there's five ways today that you can lower returns and increase your affiliate commissions. I hope those help. And if you're looking for an awesome launch to promote, check out all of our upcoming product launches and recommended affiliate programs at mattmcwilliams.com forward slash what's up. We've got some awesome stuff coming up with Ryan Eliason, Michael Hyatt, Ray Edwards, Ziegler, Jeff Goins, Nick Stevenson, Chandler Bolt, you name it, including some of our own stuff. Go check that out at mattmcwilliams.com forward slash what's up. All of these programs have low return rates. I can tell you that much. So go check those out. I'll see you in one of those affiliate programs and I'll see you in the next episode.